Good evening, everyone. Four home games remain in the regular season for the UNCW baseball team. Tonight, the brooms were at the ready as they look to sweep number seven, North Carolina, on the season. Mark Scaff honored before this one, 900 wins, the most in UNCW history. Games tied at one in the fourth. Brandon Monteraro singles straight through the gap in the center field. Clemente and Klein comes home to score. Hills take the lead, and they, the cutest fan in all of North Carolina, is loving it. But that lead would not last in the fifth. UNCW would answer right back. Noah Bridges with a shot right into left. Is it fair? Yes, it is. It gets down. He is safe at second. UNCW's business in business with no outs. Ryan Jeffers at the plate with a double right back into left. Here comes Noah Bridges. He scores with these, but Zach Canada has to hit the Jets. He's come flying home. He's all the way home on a throwing error, and they regain the lead 3-2. It would be 4-2, and the bullpen took over the best with the most wins in the nation. There's one out. Here's another out, and the final one to end the night. Right back to Logan Beeler. Three up, three down, and the sweep is complete. UNCW knocks off the seventh ranked team in the country in sweep fashion. Seahawks head to their final series with a 4-2 win over Carolina. It was a busy night across the state as the high school playoff season is in full effect. We have highlights from baseball, softball, and lacrosse, so hey, let's start on the diamond. Our first star of the night is Buck Hardy Field, Wes Carteret taking on the new Hanover Wildcats. Fifth inning, Cats already up 3-0. Jack Kroom hits this bad boy right up to first to uh, a fielder's choice. Number 13, Troy McCaskill scores. It's 4-0 New Hanover. This one's going into left field. Here comes another Kyle Smith singles. That will bring home another run, New Hanover. 5-0. Then it's Brett Kemp. He's slinging it out to right field. Max Hildreth rat races home. Smith with the wheels. Look, and he's coming all the way home. He's scoring from first. Two runs batted in for Kemp. Part of a six-run fifth, New Hanover advances back to round four. One win away from the East Championship once again. 7-0 is the final over Wes Carteret. Now off to Hoggard High School for some softball action between Leesville Road and Hoggard in the second. Amber Small working the small ball for the Vikes. And that will pay off to a 1-0 lead on the ground at RBI. Same inning, Megan Carr gets all this one. It's back off the wall in left field. She gets to second. We've got a girl on third and second. That would pay off here. It's a dribble right back to the pitcher. Thrown away at the home plate. Safe. That is adds another run. 2 nothing. Keep it in the second. We have bases loaded here, folks, for the Vikes. Hey, you'll take runs any way you could get it in the uh, playoffs. That's a walk-on home. 11 runs in the shutout victory. Hoggard is moving on. Now two scores to get to this evening. We start with Coastal Christian versus Faith Christian in the NCISAA state semifinals for baseball. Unfortunately, the great season ends for the Centurions. They fall 5-0. Meanwhile, top-seeded Whiteville was taking on the NC School of Science and Math. And how's this for a math lesson? Whiteville adds 16 runs together to equal a berth in round four by a final of 16-0. It only takes five innings to advance. Now let's go ahead and take a road trip for some softball action. Whiteville taking on Washington up north. Mary Dixon will get the double here for the home team. That gets her in business, but she is stranded because then we come now into this strikeout swing, and that's tough for Whiteville. This is a back-and-forth game here. The Pack fans hoping for something good to happen. The defense helps lock it down. The offense adds one, and it's a 1-0 win. They are advancing. Now the number one seeded West Brunswick Trojans were taking on Cedar Ridge this evening, and it's a clean sweep for our softball teams. The Trojans pull off the big 4-3 victory to move on to round four as well. It took a bottom of the ninth walk-off victory to do it, but they'll play Cleveland High Friday night at home with the 7 p.m. start time. We have our first look of the playoffs at Cape Fear Academy Hurricanes in the state semifinals. Canes already up and they're looking to add to the first Preston meal here. Slings it. Oh, look at the speed. Look at the power. 2 nothing. Canes. Still pounding the first. It's Bennett Dahl this time on the breakaway, making moves right past the goalie. 3 nothing. Now, good passes here. Find Cole Boggio and he finds the net. 
Five nothing with the goal right there in front of the net minder. We go to the second frame of action. A lot of the same number 31. Look at the bouncer by Henry Murtaugh. That's seven nothing. And then we're going to go to Cole Boggio here, folks. Look at that. That's what college lacrosse looks like. He makes it nine nothing in total. 20 goals for the defending champs. They're heading back to the championship. 20 to one is the final over Forsyth Country Day School. Unfortunately, the fortunes were not the same for the New Hanover guys who looked to punch their tickets to the state championship. And the Ashley girls, a lot of the same, unfortunately. They lose 19-7 to Cardinals Gibbons. They are eliminated from the playoffs, but Screaming Eagles had a great season. They beat Hoggard twice. They finished the year 14-4. Let's look at that guy's playoff score that I was telling you about. Well, we're going to look at Laney's score here first. It's Fuquay Verena in a tie game, sends it into PKs for the soccer. Laney Bucks lose on the sixth penalty kick. They would be eliminated from the playoffs, but they had another great season. Hoggard will be playing tomorrow in their game. All right, speaking of Laney, it's time to take an in-depth look at the GOAT, who went to school there. ESPN Films and Netflix are reportedly joining forces for a documentary series on the life of his royal heiress, Michael Jordan. The Athletics' Richard Deitch is reporting that the two production companies are working on a multi-part 10-hour documentary about the legendary basketball player. Deitch says the project is set to come out in 2019 and that Jordan has signed off on his participation. Brooklyn... He, Brooklyn, of course, is the hometown of Michael Jordan, but he moved to Wilmington when he was a toddler, raised here as you see him at Laney High School, graduated in 1981 before coming a star at UNC, then eventually, of course, one of the greatest to ever play professional basketball. Now, big news for you soccer fans out there. The CONCACAF Gold Cup will be returning to the Tar Heel State in 2019. Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte has been selected as one of the 13 host cities for the games featuring teams like Mexico, Costa Rica, and your United States men's national team. The Queen City played host to the Gold Cup in 2011 and 2015 and will host an international championship match between Liverpool and Bor Russia Dortmund. CONCACAF will announce other stadium venues throughout the week. Now, just one final note, I want to make sure we get this out there. The new Hanover Wildcats guys fell just short of a state championship berth. 11 to 10 is the final this evening. They took a long road trip, and unfortunately, they're coming back home. But a great season for those guys, so shout out to them.